Welcome back to Sam's Kitchen Chronicles. I know it's been a while. Apologies for my lack of videos of late. Been a little bit busy, mostly on account of this guy. Yeah, I'm a dad now. Anyway, today we're making Korean fried chicken. They say fried chicken was invented in the West, but perfected in the East. I largely agree. Don't get me wrong, KFC's nice, but you don't know what you don't know. If KFC is the only experience you have with fried chicken, I'm sorry, but I feel sorry for you. If I were to have a personal fried chicken ranking system, I think KFC might be at the bottom of it. Again, I don't mean to demean it, I just think that there are so many other better iterations of fried chicken than KFC. KFC is just sort of basic fried chicken. Now of all the different fried chickens the world has to offer, Southern Fried Chicken, Buffalo Wings, Chicken 65, Nashville Hot, Karaage, Prawn Paste Wings, this is my favorite, Korean style, hands down. For the record, I'm not saying this just because I'm Korean. And by the way, not all Korean fried chickens are fried equally. I actually think that the other Korean fried chicken, Yangnyeom chicken, aka Takgangjeong, are they the same thing? I'm not really sure. Anyway, is overrated and ranks similarly to KFC on my scale of preference. Of the purely battered fried chickens of the world, I would rank Japanese karaage or even American Chinese restaurant fried chicken wings up there. Again, this is just my personal preference. Maybe you've tried all the different fried chickens of the world and you actually like KFC, that's fine. You do you. I'm just telling you what my preference is. Actually, I will say that among the Western style fried chicken wings of the world, Nashville hot chicken gets an honorable mention. No one cares what you think. All right, moving on. So what makes this style of chicken so good? The key is in the crunch and that's achieved by double frying. The sauces are good in their own right too. And it's these two chicken joints, ponchon and kyochon, that make this style of chicken. At least they're the ones I think that do it best. I'm sure there are other ones too, and I'm not sure if there's a real proper name for this particular style of chicken, so I'm just gonna go with ponchon or kyochon. Actually, if you're in Southeast Asia, you might be familiar with Four Fingers. They also do this style of chicken. I'll add that the very best I've ever had of this style of chicken, and subsequently the best chicken I've had in my entire life, was in a place in Philadelphia called Cafe Soho. Though that was years ago, so I can't speak for it now. But if you've been recently, drop me a comment below. I would love to hear how it is now, see if it's still any good. Okay, so back to this chicken recipe. This chicken is so good and so crispy that you could even go without any sauce. Or you could literally put any sauce you want on it. Here's a little tip for those in Singapore. Try it with some black pepper sauce, delicious. Okay, so this recipe deserves your attention. I've been working at it for years, honing it down to this. Now it's not perfect, but it's at a point now where I'm comfortable sharing it online. This might be the closest thing you might find to a copycat recipe to Honchon or Kyochon style chicken. Now without further ado, here's how to make Honchon or Kyochon style Korean fried chicken at home. Now if you're having Korean fried chicken, you need to have it with chicken mu, which is the pickled radish that's normally eaten with this. You wanna make this a few hours before you have the chicken. It's really simple. First, gather your ingredients. Of course, you'll need radish, about one pound. And for the brine, you'll need two thirds cup of water, one third cup of vinegar, three tablespoons of sugar, and one tablespoon of salt. First, cut and peel the radish. Cut it into cubes. Combine the brine ingredients into a container. That's the sugar, salt, vinegar, and water. Make sure it dissolves. Throw the radish into the brine. Refrigerate for a few hours. Now on to the main event. For the sauce, you'll need one tablespoon of soy sauce, two tablespoons of gochujang, quarter teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of garlic, half a teaspoon of kochukaru, that's pepper flakes, one tablespoon of mirin, quarter teaspoon of sesame oil, one and a half tablespoons of sugar. First, make your sauce ahead of time. Mm -hmm. 
For the batter, you'll need a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, half cup of cornstarch or potato starch or whatever starch you have, three tablespoons of rice flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, though I forgot to add it when making the video, but it'll help make the batter a bit more airy, and I totally recommend. Frying oil, salt, and of course, chicken. I've got about a dozen wings here. Now the exact ratio of flour, cornstarch, and rice flour can be further refined. I'll leave that to you to personalize. I do a bit more rice flour and starch and less flour. I don't think this ratio matters as much as the ratio of water to the dry ingredients. And for the baker's percentage of water, I went with 100% hydration. That means that the weight of all my dry ingredients equals the weight of water. The hydration may actually need to be slightly higher as I found that I was almost working with oobleck by the end of the dredge. Just mix in more water if you need. When it's time to cook the chicken, get your dredging station ready. Bring your oil to roughly 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. Toss the wings in the flour. Coat it in the batter. And put it in the fryer. It's gonna cook for about seven to eight minutes. I'm using wings, as I've mentioned. You can definitely use other parts of the chicken, but the cooking times will vary. I prefer wings anyway. To me, they're perfect. Now this is the key to making Korean fried chicken. It's the double fry. And to do a double fry, you need a rest time. So take that chicken out and let it rest about five to 10 minutes. Now for the second fry. Put it on high heat and bring it to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. You could even go higher because the temperature is going to drop when you add the chicken. Unless you're using a deep fryer. Whatever the case, just maintain and monitor your oil temperature. The first fry is for cooking the chicken, while the second fry is to give it the distinct crisp of a Korean fried chicken. And if you do it right, the crisp will remain even after adding the sauce. It's really gonna fry hard and you're gonna hear the difference. You might even feel it too, so use a splatter screen if you have one. Fry for about two minutes or until crispy to your liking. Listen to that. It's music to my ears. You're not slathering sauce like buffalo wings or takkamjong for this. You can if you want, but I like it brushed on. It's the perfect amount of sauce for my liking. Plus, you get the crunch. It's the best of both worlds. Not to mention that this is one of the distinguishing factors of a ponchon or kyochon style chicken. That's kind of what we're going for here. Now look at that. that paza paza This is so good you can just eat it straight but first with the sauce Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, try the recipe, tell me how it is. I'll see you next. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs>